I got it. Also, uh, please save your questions for the end because I will give you plenty of time to ask questions at the end. Also, you won't need to take any notes because I have several handouts that I will be giving you toward the end as well. Uh, as I was saying that today we live in a society here where the average senior citizen is on about 14 different medications. And it's uh, not only causing side effects, not only side effects from the medications themselves, but also the interactions with the side, of, side effects. We have become a pill society because we really be, don't know any better way of dealing with pain except by taking pills or perhaps through surgery. But in the last few years, there have been some rather important developments in this regard. And so what I want to do with you today is to show you or lead you through uh, something, a, a guided imagery tour. They, first of all, they have found that through deep breathing and relaxation, just through deep breathing and relaxation, a person is able to reduce the intensity as well as the frequency of their pain episodes by half, just by deep breathing and through relaxation. And so what I'm going to do with you today is to show you a very quick, easy, and effective way of becoming deeply relaxed. And then um, I want to show you, lead you on a guide with your permission, guide you, guide you on a tour to some place that you have found very healing. Now, Einstein once said that in intelligence, the best measure of intelligence is not our knowledge, but our imaginations. And so what I want to do to you today is to, for you to trust the intelligence of your imaginations as I lead you on this tour. There's, there's nothing hokey about this because the Mayo Clinic has found that guided imagery is an effective way of reducing pain and, in, and improving health. The Cleveland Clinic has also has a study out to show the same thing, that is an effective means of maintaining health and reducing pain. And so with Einstein's guidance about imagery being a better view of intelligence, some people seem to think, I have to see something before I believe it. Einstein would say, no, you have to see it up here before you'll ever see it out there. And so that's why I want to lead you through a little exercise, and we'll have time afterwards. I have several handouts that you can ask as many questions, and there will be questions about what we do. So with your permission, I'd like for you to trust the intelligence of your imaginations as I lead you through this exercise. And first, I'm going to show you, guide you through a way of deeply and quickly relaxing. The first thing to know is with regard to breathing. Breathing, you say, oh, I've been doing this pretty well for quite a few years. <laughs> and, uh, but deep breathing is, is one of the key steps for health and healing for several reasons. Deep breathing can change the chemistry of your body by bringing oxygen into your tissues and by absorbing and eliminating contaminants. Let me repeat that. Deep breathing can change the chemistry of your body by bringing oxygen into your tissues and by absorbing and eliminating contaminants. That's the first reason. Deep breathing also slows, by, when, when, by deep breathing, it slows your breathing down. When your breathing slows down, your pulse rate slows down. And when your pulse rate slows down, it just becomes so much easier, easier to relax. And so I want to begin by showing you a deep breathing exercise. First of all, what I'd like for you to do, if you would please, is to allow your eyes to close. And with your eyelids closed, I would like for you to take a deep breath to the count of four, and then hold it for the count of five and then exhale it 
to the count of six. It's more important that your exhale be longer than your inhale because this alone will slow your breathing down. Now, some people, rather than counting one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five, prefer to do it by saying simply, cool head, cool head. And then while you hold it, and calm comfort. And on calm comfort. And then when you exhale, releasing all tension now. Releasing all tension now. Now, you can do either one. You can either count, or if you can prefer We'll just, I'll just say this as we do it. Ready? Take a very deep breath. Cool head. Cool head. And hold it in calm comfort. And calm comfort. And now exhale, letting go all tension now. Letting go all tension now. Let's do it again, counting. Deep breath. One, two, three, Four and hold it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And exhale, letting go all tension. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do it again. Deep breath. One, two, three, four. Hold it. One, two, three, four, five. And exhale fully. Letting go all tension now. Three, four, five, six. That's excellent. And one more time, please. Deep, deep breath in. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Holding it. One, two, three, four, five. And exhaling all tension now. Two, three, four, five, six. There, you have it. And now, just allow your eyes to remain closed, please. Just allow your eyes to remain closed, and I'm going to help you relax just a little bit. With your eyelids closed, I would like for you to raise your eyeballs up as if you're trying to look at a bug on the ceiling. That's it. Imagine that there's a bug on the ceiling. Keeping your eyelids closed, roll your eyelids up, eyeballs up, until you feel some eye strain. You want to feel some eye strain. And hold that for 10 seconds, OK? All right, keeping your eyelids closed. Roll your eyeballs up as if you're trying to look at a bug on the ceiling until you feel some eye strain. 10 seconds, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And relax your eyes, keeping them closed, keeping your eyelids closed. Relax your eyes now and allow that relaxation to flow down into your cheeks, flowing down into your cheeks, flowing down and into your jaw, into your neck. Because you see, your body likes to relax. Just allow your body to do what it wants to do. That's right. Just allow your body to do what it's comfortable in doing. That's it. Relaxing deeply now. Allow that relaxation to flow down into your shoulders, down into your arms, your biceps, your forearms, your wrists, your hands. And you may find that certain parts of your body relax more fully, more deeply, more quickly than others. It doesn't matter. Just trust. Trust the intelligence in each part of your body to choose for itself how deeply it wants to relax now. And allow that relaxation to flow down into your torso, down into your back, down into your chest, down, down into your stomach, into your organs, allowing your body to do what it enjoys doing, allowing that relaxation to flow even deeper, deeper down into your hips, down into your legs, your knees, your calves, going down 
think of it just like warm butter, warm butter or warm syrup, just dripping down, letting gravity pull it on down. Just like warm butter, warm syrup trickling on down, down to your legs, your knees, your calves, your ankles, your feet, into all of your organs. And as you become even more deeply relaxed, you may find that your arms or your legs become a little heavy or a little numb or tingling. Doesn't, or not, it doesn't matter. Just enjoy those deep feelings of relaxation now. Because we are about to, to go on a beautiful trip. A trip to a place where you've been before place where you've been before and found it so enjoyable. So for now, I would like for you to imagine you're standing at the top of a beautiful staircase, standing at the top of a beautiful staircase with 10 steps going down, 10 steps. And the staircase is carpeted in your favorite color. So just place one of your hands on the railing and let's walk down the staircase together, very slowly, pausing on each step, pausing on each step to go even more deeply relaxed than before. Nine, going down to the ninth step. And any sounds that you hear, just allow them to pass on. And focus now on the sound of my voice and my words going deeper, relaxed with each step down now. Eight, eight, relaxing and going deeper. And your symptoms are saying to you, it's time for a change. It's time for a change. And that's okay. Seven, seven, going down deeper. So, and so, you walk toward the door, put your hand on the handle, open the door, and step outside. Step outside onto a beautiful porch. And beyond the porch is this beach. And this beach may look familiar to you. Perhaps, perhaps it's a beach you've been to before, either in your mind or actually there. A beautiful beach, except this time you have the beach entirely to yourself. It's a deserted beach, so you have the beach entirely to yourself, and so you could feel completely safe here, completely safe. And so before you, you cannot wait, but take your shoes off so that you begin walking barefoot through the sand, through the warm sand. 
So you sit down on the stoop on the stairs and you remove any footwear, remove your shoes and socks or sandals, remove your footwear to, so you can begin walking barefoot on the beach. But before stepping onto the beach, you'll notice there two baskets. And in one of the baskets is a balloons, a basket filled with balloons, clear, plastic, transparent balloons. And so reach into the basket and pick one of the balloons to take with you on your trip to the beach. And you will also notice next to the balloons a basket of string. So take one of the strings so that you'll be able to tie off the end of your balloon when you're on the beach. And so you now step onto this beach into the warm sand and begin walking barefoot through the warm sand, feeling the warm sand squishing between your toes, bathing your ankles, your calves, enjoying the warm sand as you gently, slowly walk through the warm sand. And you hear overhead the sound of the seagulls. And you look overhead and you can see the seagulls as they're drifting and floating just like the clouds. And as you continue walking along the beach, you can smell and hear the water on the beach as the surf gently, ever so gently, washes upon the beach. And the smell comes in, the smell of salt water comes in, and it's so peaceful and so enjoyable. There, walking through the sand, enjoying the serenity, the serenity. And while you're there, as you walk along this beach, even more deeply relaxed now, a miracle has been taking place with each step that you take. There is a gland at the base of your skull that is shaped like a teardrop and produces a natural healing substance called endorphin. And this natural endorphin in your body produces chemicals that are many times stronger than morphine or any other painkiller. And this very powerful pain reliever drips from this gland into your bloodstream and your bloodstream carries this powerful pain, pain reliever to the tissues in your body where it's needed to turn off any pain signals. And as this endorphin drip is carried by your bloodstream to parts of your body where you might have been feeling pain or stiffness or blockages or soreness, it coats the pain receptors that transmit pain to your brain then permeates them with these powerful endorphins, lessening and even eliminating that pain. And you can adjust the drip of this natural pain reliever into your bloodstream simply by relaxing completely and focusing on that part of your body where you might have been feeling any discomfort. Just simply observe it as the pain dissolves and disappears through perspiration. And as this endorphin drip occurs, you may notice a momentary warmth or heaviness or numbness, a throbbing or tingling sensation, or perhaps even a sudden shift or movement in that part of your body that has been painful, letting you know that it's working. Just notice your body's own response to this continued drip, drip, drip of soothing, healing endorphins into your bloodstream as you become even more deeply relaxed now. And so as you stand there in the sun, stand there with your feet emerging in the, in the sand, take your balloon, take this transparent, clear balloon, and take a very deep breath, deep breath, and begin to inflate your balloon. And as you take a very deep breath, dead and damaged cells are caught in this breath and blown into the balloon. And so pinch off the edge to hold it in there. And then take another deep breath and harmful contamination 
bacteria and viruses are caught in your breath and blown into the balloon. And then take another deep breath and any blood clots or other blockages are caught in your breath. Places where there's some pain or soreness, blow those into the balloon again. And one more deep breath, one deep clearing breath now. And in your breath you take this deep breath, any remaining contaminants or viruses in your body or painful areas in your body are caught in this breath and blown into the balloon. And now take your string and tie off the end of your balloon. Tie off the end of the balloon and hold it out in front of you. And as you hold this balloon out in front of you, may, you may notice that where it was first clear and transparent, it has now taken on a color. What color and shape is your balloon now? It may be red. It may be black. It may be brown. Just notice the color and the shape of your balloon as you hold it out in front of you. And now just let your balloon drop into the sand. And as your bl balloon drops into the sand, a breeze catches the balloon and begins to blow it down toward the water's edge. Focus all of your attention on your balloon, the pain-filled balloon being blown down across the sand toward the water's edge. And you may want to walk down toward the water's edge so that you could keep your eye on the balloon as long as possible. And when you get down toward the water's edge, your pain-filled balloon is caught by the surf, and the surf begins to carry it further and further farther and farther out into the water until it's just a speck on the horizon. And as you notice, this pain-filled balloon then disappears over the horizon. And as your pain-filled balloon disappears over the horizon, a breeze comes in and caresses your cheeks. And before starting back through the warm sand, you notice there at the water's edge a bottle. A bottle. And there appears to be a note inside this bottle. So you walk down the beach to the water's edge, pick up the bottle, unscrew the lid, and remove the note. And the note in this bottle has, says this, for whom it may concern. Three questions for you to think about. Question one, who do you need to forgive now? Who do you need to forgive now? The second question says, do you believe there's a miracle inside of you just waiting for you? Do you believe there's a miracle inside of you just waiting for you? And three, will you notice this miracle and take steps to make it come true? Will you notice this miracle and take steps to make it come true? So you think about these three important questions as you're walking back in the warm sand, feeling this warm sand squishing through your toes and warming your feet and ankles. And, and as you do, Notice a path leading away from the beach, and you're curious as to where this path may lead. And so when you reach the path, you notice that it forks. The left path is muddy and bleak and foreboding with no flowers or vegetation. It's cold and dreary and with what looks to be a steep cliff in the distance. And you instinctively know that this is not your path. The path on the right, however, is bright with grass and flowers and plants blooming in the warm sunshine. And you sense that this is the path that you want to travel. But before you can take it, there's a wide stream you have to cross. And no way to cross this stream to the other side, but some stones to step on. So you hesitate, thinking 
These stones look slippery and too far apart, and my legs are too short, and my balance is too poor. And your self-doubt and your fear keep you from taking that first step to cross the stream on such unpredictable stones to continue on your preferred path. So you pause and take a deep breath to think about it. And as you stand there frustrated at the stream impeding your progress, you might also feel a little bit of anger that the stream is blocking your walk along this beautiful path. But standing on the other side of the stream is someone you have known for a long, long time and who knows you very well someone who has cared about you, someone you have trusted and felt safe and secure with, perhaps someone who has guided you and helped you through rough patches in your life before, such as a minister, a spiritual person, a teacher, a mentor, or a parent, somebody else, and for whom you have deep respect. This person is standing there on the other side of the stream waiting for you, smiling and greets you by name and you are so happy to see this person so greet this person and say how glad you are to see this person who you have known so long and respected and loved and cared for you trust this wise and caring person and you ask what do i do now how can i get across this stream it's too hard and this person replies, yes, you can. You could do this. You're intelligent and capable. And throughout your life, you have already shown the ability and courage to do what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. So no matter how difficult, so be confident and trust yourself again now by taking just one small step at a time. And you'll find that with each step you take, it gets a little easier each time. And then you'll be able to continue on your path on the other side of the stream. I'm here if you need me. Just trust yourself now as you take this first step. And then another, and then another. And before you know it, it will have crossed, you will have crossed the stream and can resume your walk on the path you have chosen. And so you take your first step onto the first stone, then pause with both feet on the stone, feeling relief and a little proud of yourself for accomplishing this first step. And looking down now to where you must step next and where you have taken this next step, once again, pausing to say to yourself, there, I did it again. And so you plan your next step and so on and so on until you have succeeded in crossing the stream to the other side and feeling proud of yourself for having accomplished what you needed to do to cross the stream and to continue your walk on this beautiful path. And once you have crossed the stream, your special friend says, good job, I knew you could do it. And something deep inside you said you could do it too, right? And now that you've taken these important steps, I have something to show you. So walk with me. And as you round a bend in your beautiful path, you see what was once a healthy lawn. And as you get closer to this lawn, you see that it's your very own lawn. But there are now patches of weeds on it, destroying its appearance and health. And as you observe these weeds, you also notice white sheep being blocked from grazing on the weeds because of a fence and a gate. So your wise and trusted friend just looks at you and asks, well, what are you waiting for? What are you going to do? So you walk up to the gate and open it and let the white sheep onto your lawn. And they head right away to the patches of weeds and begin devouring them. And when the white sheep have eaten all the weeds on a certain patch, they simply move to another patch and resume devouring those weeds too. And you're happily surprised to see how soon the weeds in your lawn are gone. And the sheep remain there. These white sheep just remain there waiting to get rid of any more weeds that may reappear in the future. And your beautiful lawn is healthy again. 
So your friend says, it's now time to return. So you begin walking back on your path, and you, when you come to the stream again that you crossed before, you can't help smiling because your confidence has grown, knowing that you have successfully dealt with this obstacle before and can do it again without having to even think about it. And when you reach the beginning of the path and before starting back across the beach, back to the porch, your wise and trusted special friend says, well done, very well done. Is there anything that you would like to ask me now? Anything that you would like to ask me now? And you say, yes, yes, there is something I want to ask you. The note from the bottle said that I would find a miracle within me. When will I find this miracle? And your wise and trusted friend says, smiles and calls you by name and says, you already have. You see, this miracle is not a single event. This miracle is not something that happens to you, but a process, a miracle process that you yourself have created by the fact that you've taken this trip, showing that you're willing to do something different. And when you chose the best path to take, and when you took each courageous and determined step across that stream, and what you have observed occurring within you and around you during this trip, each step taking you closer and closer to what you want and need so much. You're making these miracles come true as you take these steps to help yourself get what you need and want. Do you see this now? Your miracle, controlling your pain and better health, is a process of being open to doing some things differently, trusting yourself your confidence and your courage and determination and noticing the result. So you pause to think about this and can't help but notice how positively and confidently you're thinking and talking to yourself now about your health and how others around you are likely to be drawn to you now because you radiate this positive outlook and confidence. Yes, others may be curious as to how you have been able to achieve this and may even seek your advice about how they too can accomplish as much as you have to gain control of their own comfort. So your friend says, just remember that you can return here anytime you wish just by relaxing deeply and remembering everything on this beach path and beach trip that you want to remember and what's important to you. I'll be waiting for you here if you need me again. If you wish to do so, simply press the tips of your thumb, your index, and middle fingers together, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For the tips of these three fingers will remind you that the power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are at your fingertips whenever you ask. So take another deep breath. Trust your body and become even more deeply relaxed now. So you walk back to the porch through the warm sand again. And as you do, feeling once again the drip, drip, drip of your endorphins into your bloodstreams, being pulled to the pain centers of your body and watching for the sudden movement or shift or changes in those areas of your body that had been giving you trouble before. And as you reach the porch and you sit down on the stoop and put your shoes back on, your footwear back on, preparing to come back inside, you glance up at the sky and see a small plane pulling a banner. And the banner says, you'll notice things looking up when you help others needing your help. So you read the banner again. It says, you'll notice things looking up when you help others needing your help. And so you come up to the porch, open the beautiful hand-carved door, and begin to come back up the stairs. And as you come back up the stairs, 
and begin walking slowly back up, pausing again on each step up. You reflect on your experience during this trip to the beach and what you have learned and what steps you have taken and plan to take to guide you to more and more comfort each day. So as you come back up these stairs, pausing on each step, be aware that each step has significance for you now. As you repeat these words, as you get on the first step, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'll be fine. And another step, a second step, I'm safe and not in danger. And a third step, I'm in charge and I can do what I want. And the fourth step, you can't hurt me anymore. I am powerful and I'm removing your control over me. The fifth step, I am not stopping my activities or giving in to you anymore. Sixth step, I am healthy and strong. There is nothing wrong with me that I can't overcome. Seventh step, I will seek new ways to take care of myself even better than before. A step, and you may start to notice feeling better a little at a time because of the new steps you are taking now. The important thing is to be alert to what's different and better. The ninth step, you may wonder how quickly and completely you will succeed and you can't help but smile because you now are ready to do some things differently in order to gain more comfort and to reduce any discomfort. In the 10th step, you're now standing at the top of the staircase and your eyes are beginning to flutter open, gradually fluttering, beginning to open, feeling fully awake and energetic, like you are awakening from a, mat, a long nap, feeling good, wiggling your fingers and toes, and stretching gently to let yourself know that you're back here in this room. You can allow your eyes to open whenever you choose to open them. Stretching, you may want to wiggle your fingers and toes and stretch a little bit to let yourself know that you're awake. Now, let's like to hear what your experience is with this. I have some handouts that I want to give you that I think you're going to find very interesting. It's going to probably stimulate a lot of questions also. But just on the basis of this guided imagery trip, how was this for you? Any, any reaction? What's that? Remember what I said earlier, that just the first part of this, by deep breathing and deep relaxation, that alone, that alone can reduce the incidence and the severity of any pain by about 50%. And it only takes around 10 or 15 minutes to do this. Now the training that I just received in North Carolina indicates that people who, who meditate, how many people here do meditate uh, or have meditated? at some point. And to those of you who have meditated, how many of you still meditate? See all the hands go down. One, one of the things that, that I uh, want to unlearn, the, the title of the session was Unlearn Your Pain. One of the things I unlearned, it's not necessary to meditate for 45 minutes to an hour. I don't, I've known many people who have previously meditated, but when you have instructions to meditate for that long, life gets in the way of the, of the meditation. So if you're going to meditate, usually 15, 20 minutes is quite enough. And if you don't have time to, to meditate, one person wrote me and says, I'm having trouble meditating, why? And I said, well, the reason that you're probably having trouble meditating is you're not fully relaxed enough. If, if you tried meditating before, it's very important that you deeply relax. Now this process that I showed you is probably the quickest, simplest, and the most effective way of going into a deep relaxation rather quickly. Uh, a a uh, recording has been made of this, I hope he's got this part in there, that perhaps you'll be able to hear again if you want to hear it again. 
but just this belt and going down the stairs, becoming more deeply relaxed with each step down, takes about 10 minutes. And if you do that alone, you will be very, very deeply relaxed and, and then begin to meditate. Or, and by just doing that step, going down those stairs and getting that deeply relaxed, Many people will find that their, their pain uh, intensity has decreased in frequency and, and, and intensity by at, le at least half, just that much, before even doing the, the guided imagery that we went through here. And do you remember that on your trip, the importance of this, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, because the, this is at your fingertips. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are at our fingertips at all times anyway. And this is just a trigger or a reminder, a, a symbol of whenever we do this, we can go back into this very relaxed state, sometimes just by pressing the tips of your thumb, index, and middle finger together. Any questions before? Now, I have some hands. Can you pass out the handouts? Now this first one, this first one, Better Health Through Chemistry, is something that you could probably read later. It is a chilling list of statistics about how we have become such a pain, a pill, pill society. Um, it, it's sort of chilling to read this, how all of us, and particularly seniors, are becoming, have become so reliant upon pills and with the average being 14 medications and there is a polypharmacy de uh, um, guideline definition that says if you're on five or more medications, there are the risk of serious side effects and drug interactions increase considerably when you're taking five or more medications. Um, an estimated 25% of Americans exceed the recommended dosages when taking pain-related drugs. At least 2 million older Americans are taking a combination of drugs or supplements that are risky mix from blood thinners and cholesterol pills. And so I'm not going to read you all of these, but as you read them, I'm sure that all of you will point to certain ones and says, oh my, this is me, or this was my mother, or this is my father, or this is my best friend. But as you read these statistics, they will remind you of people in your own family and friends and so on that are now caught up in this conundrum of trying to deal with pain strictly through pills and, and, and surgery. So without any further ado on that, there's another one here It says, saying goodbye to pain. I have found that now that I'm a, a resident like you in Smith Mountain Lake and a senior citizen, and virtually most of my friends, all of my friends here are senior citizens and, and interacting with them for, for almost 20 years, these are the statements that I hear most often. I will read them to you. Perhaps they will remind you of someone. My pain will be here tomorrow just as it was yesterday and today. I can't control my pain. 
I'll never get better. I'm too damaged already. Its severity is dependent on my prescription and, other, and over the counter medications. My pain interferes with my sleep. My pain limits what I can do. My pain frightens me. This is a big fear. So many of our generation, with respect to pain, look at it this way. This is the same pain I had yesterday. This is the same pain I had today. And by extension, this is what I've got to look forward to in the future. That produces a deep-seated fear. And there's been studies that show that if you can somehow get people to realize, to, to, to uh, stop uh, focusing on the past or the future and just on the present, they will have eliminated pain by two-thirds that the pain that we feel is a manifestation of pain past, pain present, and pain future. And if we can get rid of the pain past and future, that alone will eliminate most of the pain, at least two-thirds of the pain that we're feeling. My pain frightens me. My pain is a part of me, so I might as well learn to live with it. Nothing I can do to change it, so I might as well accept it. Now, if you see yourself, or if any of these resonate within you, find yourself any of these applying to you, you'll find that the following below, um, and I won't attempt to go into each one of those, but if you begin to communicate with yourself and talk to yourself. Now, as Stephen ministers, one thing that you probably already know, I have not been through the Stephen, Stephen ministry program, but one thing you probably have been trained or already know is that the way that people talk to you is the very same way they talk to themselves. And sometimes the way they talk to themselves is very disabling. It, 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 is, it is disabling for them. And so um, and when I'm do, do, doing clinical work with individuals, I've got to help them to change the cans and the change and the cans. I've got to begin to help them change the negative self-programming that they're giving themselves because it is a really a form of negative self-hypnosis or negative self-programming when they're constantly referring to themselves in negative ways. And so I don't know if, as Stephen ministers, you attempt to get into that, but it's, it's very important to help them to change the dialogue, to change the monologue that not only the way they're talking to you, but the way they're talking to themselves, where they're talking to themselves in a way that makes them feel worse a way that makes them feel better. Now, the last thing that you have here is when you go to a doctor, the doctor gives you a prescription. I've written you a prescription. And let's go down through those rather quickly. I want to go down through it. You, you, you'll generally find it helpful to begin thinking of calling it discomfort rather than pain. On the back of it, you have a comfort discomfort scale. We don't have that. We don't need that. You don't have this? No. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, avoid, it is helpful you to, for you to begin talking in terms of discomfort rather than pain and thinking in terms of moving in general steps, small, small steps, baby steps, away from pain down to uh, a discomfort, down to comfort, uh, thinking of it in those terms. Also, avoid talking to yourself or others about your pain because as you describe it, you focus your mind on it and elicit all the painful feelings that go with it. One of the things that I find a great deal, and I have a dear, dear friend that uh, we quite often have lunch with, and it's, it seems as if her main topic, if not her only topic of, con uh, of conversation, is the symptoms, her pain symptoms, and not only the pains that she's feeling now and yesterday. And she doesn't realize it, but as she's describing in great detail her pain, you can see the tears form in her eyes, and she's feeling worse and worse. Somebody wiser than me put it this way. 
Whatever you focus on grows. Whatever you talk about grows. So it doesn't help. <clears throat> it doesn't help people think that it, it makes them feel better by talking about it. Usually it's just the opposite. The more they talk about it, the, in order to describe your pain, you've got to, to be able to describe it ac accurately. You've got to begin to re-experience it. You've got to be able to pull up and dredge up those feelings of pain in order to begin to describe it. That can't help but make you feel worse rather than better. And how many of us have friends or family that we know that are in that mode where they firmly believe that their, their main source of conversation quite often seems to be discussing their latest pain episode or pain symptoms. Think about that. Uh, the other thing is practicing, uh, go down to number three, practice deep relaxation and meditation daily. If you can just do what I've shown you to do for just 10, 15 minutes a day, you'll begin to find some, some uh, relief. Um, your me mental focus and your daily activities can move you on the scale to a more comfort and away from discomfort. Let me show you what I did the other day. <clears throat> I've been having lower, lower back pain too. Off and on for the years I've had sciatica like virtually everybody else we know. And I had sciatica and I was doing all the stretches that I know. I even went for a massage and I did all the uh, stretches that I know and it still had this lingering pain back there. And then my wife dropped me off at the wellness center and I had about two uh, blocks of walk back to the house. And I said, maybe it's time that I uh, walk my talk. And maybe it's time that I practice what I've been telling other people to do. So as I'm walking, I'm taking exaggerated breaths. I'm taking really very, very deep breaths, really exaggerating it. And I'm holding it and walking and walk. Two blocks. In. And I'm thinking positive thoughts. And the kind of thoughts, not, it may sound silly, but I'm saying, I can do this. There's absolutely no reason for this pain to, to continue here. I've done everything. I've gotten a massage. I've, I've, I've worked out. Uh, there's absolutely no uh, uh, reason that I can think of. I haven't injured myself. There's no reason why this pain should persist. So I kept thinking, this is silly to have this kind of pain. And I'm breathing very, very deeply. By the time I got back, it's a two block walk. By the time I got back and I sat down for a few minutes and I got back up, it was gone. Totally gone. If it works for me, it'll work for you. Connie and I were talking about how important it is for movement to be able to get some movement, regardless of how small, just to be able to begin to get some small movement. I've often said to people that the most difficult thing in exercising is tying your sneakers on. Because, it's true, because once you've tied your sneakers on, you feel obligated to step outside the door. And once you step outside the door, you will say, well, heck, I'm practically there now. I've got my shoes on. <laughs> so the most difficult thing psychologically to exercise you get is getting those shoes on and stepping outside your door. There you're halfway home. And so if you're really feeling bad and you say, okay, my back is hurting or this is hurting, I'll walk down to the end of the block and back. I'll walk down to that telephone pole and back. I'll walk down in the block. And by the time you get down to the end of your block, and say, well, maybe feel a little bit better. Maybe I'll just go a little bit further. And I did this years ago when I had back problem. And I was, uh, went to, to, to get, for, get surgery. And the doctor said, I'm not going to do surgery on it. He said, what you need to do is go in and lose a few pounds and exercise more. So I was sort of hurt. Well, I'll just find, <laughs> I'll just, I'll just find another doctor, a doctor shop. I'll find another doctor that understands me. <laughs> and so, and so, I said, oh, well, heck, I read this book, Walk Away Your Back Pain. So I said, oh, this is nonsense. And so, and I had a hill right outside my house. So I said, well, what else I got? I have no other options at the moment. So I started walking around the block, doing what they said, breathing very deeply, thinking these kinds of thoughts as I did coming around the block. By the time I got back home, the pain was totally gone, totally gone. And I started out thinking it was nonsense. It's not nonsense. And I mentioned this because of the importance of movement. Connie and I were talking about, about that, about the importance of movement. Um, another thing, get out of yourself and focus your attention on others who may be. Remember one of the things we did while you were relaxed about seeing the banner? 
Get out of yourself. And you, as Stephen ministers, you're already doing this. Get out of yourself and focus on other people. You'd be surprised how much better you feel and how the pain, if it doesn't go away, will feel greatly diminished. Um, write down one healthy habit for your day. Take a walk. Find an exercise you enjoy. Do it consistently. Find a partner to do it with and to motivate each other. Okay, number eight, eat when you're hungry. You can't fill an emotional emptiness or, come, or cope with pain issues by eating. And the side effects from overeating or trying to cope with, with emotional issues by eating, the side effects from that are just as serious as the side effects from pills. You've probably known for some time that someday you'll have to make some changes anyway. So what are you waiting for? Forgive the pun. Be kind to yourself. Congratulate yourself often after having taken even small steps. Don't be so hard on yourself. Congratulate yourself after taking small steps which can make a huge difference in your comfort level, your self-confidence, and your well-being. And last but not least, have faith. A small cut will heal itself. A small cut heals it, that heals itself reminds you that your body has within it an extraordinary ability to heal itself. So that's, that's my message today. Thank you for inviting me. And I'll, I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have. That bad, huh? <laughs> Is your back pain still gone? Yeah, yes. No, it didn't come back. didn't come back. It will. The, and oh, the other thing to remember about your pain. Here's one of the things that many, they find that people don't name. Pain almost never stays the same. Pain is always changing. Now there's two types of pain. What I learned in North Carolina about a month ago is really basically two kinds of pain. If pain comes from either a fracture or a tumor or an infection, then that's that's the kind of pain that when you experience, it will stay localized. It will stay right there, and it will be pretty much consistent. If the pain that you experience does not come from a fracture or a tumor or an infection, it's probably transient. It's probably changeable, particularly, particularly if you notice it moving, if you notice it changes, or if you get up in the morning and you don't experience any pain when you first get up. Or if you're experiencing pain during the day and, and you can talk to somebody and say, well, you have pain, where does it start? And they'll say, well, it's right here. Does it move? Well, yeah, it does move. Where does it move? Well, it moves down here. If pain is moving, then that tells you that pain is changing on its own without you doing anything. It's on its own, it's changing. And if pain will change on its own in any way, then you can change it from up here. Yeah. And if, if you doubt it, I can show you. Would anybody, does anybody have a particularly localized pain that like, would like for me to demonstrate something? <laughs> huh? No, Everybody, everybody's running for the door, not me, Buster. Yeah. Huh? Okay, would you come on up, honey? We'll see. All right. Now, I don't need to know what, what's causing the pain. Uh, and, uh, anything about all I know is where is it located in your body? In your lower back, right here. In your lower back, right here. Okay, and when you experience this pain in your lower back, right there, does it move? Does, does it ever seem to start there and move up your hip or down the hip or, or across my back? Across your back. Okay, it goes along your belt line from the left. A little bit lower below the belt line. Okay, around your sacral area. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Move from left to right. All right. Now, what I'd like for you to do is to imagine this pain right now moving in the way that you just described, from the lower part of your back to the right side of your pack, pack, back. And I want you to give it a color. What color would that pain have? Orange. Orange, okay. Now, as you see this orange pain strip walk, going across your back there, I'd like for you to see it turning. I'd like for you to see it slowly spinning spinning either clockwise or counterclockwise. Can you imagine that pain that you're experiencing spinning? Is it mm -hmm. spinning clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. It's clockwise, and it's red. 
And it's no, red. it's orange. It's orange. It's orange. Okay. So this orange pane is spinning. What do I counterclockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise. Now, what I would like for you to see is make it maybe it spin faster. Make it spin a little bit faster. Does the pain increase? No. No, it doesn't increase? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what I want to see you do is change the color from orange to some other color. Okay. Change to some other color, and I want you to see it spinning in the opposite direction. I want you to see it spinning counterclockwise. It's a different color now. What color is it now? Purple. Purple. See it spinning counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. And now see it spinning faster and faster and faster. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to see it spinning outside your body. Instead of right along your belt, I'd like for you to see it spinning sort of like a six inches or a foot outside your body. And still spinning. No. Okay. You're seeing it spinning outside your, outside your body. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, if it's spinning outside your body, I'd like for you to imagine that you're hearing circus music. <laughs> imagine hearing circus music. Did you do that at the same time as it's spinning? Okay. Now, as you're hearing the circus music, I'd like for you to take three really deep breaths, just like you learned today. Three really deep breaths. Hold it, down to five, and then exhale all of it. And again. Continue to spin that faster and faster and faster in a different color, counterclockwise, counterclockwise with the circus music. Okay. And do this as long as you can stop whenever you want. How the hell is it? Okay. Huh? Is it better? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> now, how long did that take? That is, that's just, it gives you some indication, just a brief example, of that your mind really does control you. But people say, you can't say to people, well, your brain controls it. They say, oh, I know what you're saying, it's all in my head. No, I'm not saying it's all in your head. Pain is real, it's genuine. I never, ever make fun of anybody's pain. It's a genuine feeling. I'm never saying to just be caught, but, but what I am saying is that pain is not just in our bodies, it's also in our minds. It's controlled by our minds. That, that actually the pain may originate down here, but the pain receptors in your brain let you know that you're feeling it. So since you're, the, the, the pain uh, uh, switch, this pain switch, if you will, is in your mind. It's your brain that's really controlling that pain. And by, if you'll read this, when you get back, and you have some time saying goodbye to pain. It's these questions down below, these questions on beliefs that open up the prospect of controlling your pain. You know, Henry Ford, Henry Ford, the great automaker, said this, whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're right either way. <laughs> Everybody understand the importance of that belief? And the same thing applies to our health. Whether you believe you can control your pain or whether you believe you can't, you're right. Either way you believe. Which way would you rather to believe to feel better? So our beliefs are very powerful in terms of controlling the, the, our comfort levels. So with that, thank you once again for being so patient. With me. Yes? I don't get headaches. I give them to other people. <laughs> when I have friends and family, they get migraines. Applicable? With migraines as well? Yes. With migraines as well. Migraines will come and go, and they'll come and go in intensity as well as frequency. They'll come and go in intensity, and at certain times, at certain times. Um, and, and you can control my, migraines. You can control migraines. Ask them in terms of migraines where they go. The migraines will rather be will rarely be in one spot. They'll start here, they'll go in the back of the head, they'll start in the back of the head and go forward, they'll start here, they'll go down to the face, go down the neck, go down to the torso. But migraine pain moves. If it moves on its own, you'd like to know where it moves to, then something's moving it. And if 
something moving, your brain is moving. And your brain is moving it without you without you telling it how. Then your brain can control it. And there are ways, you can't get into it today, but there are ways of controlling the migraines. Yes. Very much so. They're very, they're, um, they're very reticent to do that. Oh, on the, ba on the back, on the back of there is a list of resources. The, the fellow, the guy who trained me in, in North Carolina was um, Dr. Howard Schumer, who was the director of the Mind Body Medicine Institute at Providence Hospital in Detroit. And his book, this is, his, he has a book for some editions that I read, but he also had a terrific website, Howard Schumer, MD. There is a website and there is his book. His book is entitled, um, Not Contro um, uh, Control, Unlearning Your Pain. Now, he also has on this website, he has a book not only Unlearn Your Pain, but he also has Unlearn Your Anxiety and Depression. He has another book on that as well. Now, you can go through this program with him online. I think it costs $100, but I, I'm guessing it's not $100. Because most costs about $25 each. But um, it's the best way to get started. Yeah. 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 Yeah.